Hi folks and welcome back to Math with Captain Rod. I'm making this video here to describe uh, horizontal and vertical shifts as applied to functions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a couple graphs. You know, we science people, we love our graphs. I'm just going to do this real quick graph here. We're going to take a look at uh, the function y equals x squared, y equals x squared plus 3. And y equals x uh, plus 3, the quantity squared. All right. I'm going to look at these by generating points here. So I'm going to make myself a quick table. x, y. We're going to talk about this one first. This one goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. A couple to the left. Negative 2, 4. That's probably enough for now. I just need a quick sketch here. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4 negative 2, 1, 2, 4, I probably should have did negative 1, 1 as well. All right, so here's a quick sketch of that graph. Oops. Good enough. All right, so here's a quick sketch of y equals x squared. Now we're going to look at this one y equals x squared plus 3. Again, I'm going to generate a graph, x, y, or a table. Let's see, 0 squared, 0 plus 3, 3. 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4. 2 squared, 4, plus 3, 7. Let's look at a couple on the left. Negative 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4. That's probably enough. I'm going to start plotting these. I'm going to do this one in green color code this guy. All right, 0, 3, is, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. I know, up here somewhere. 1, 4, 1, 4, 2, 7, negative 1, 4. All right, that's probably enough. Again, just need a quick sketch. So what you'll notice, or you would notice if I did a, a better job sketching this, these graphs in theory have exactly the same shape. The difference is that the green graph has been lifted up three units. All right, let's take a look at this one now, the effect of having that three over here. So y equals x plus three, the quantity square, generate a table, All right, x, y. If I put in 0 for x, now inside here I would get 0, plus 3 is 3, squared is 9. Um, now if I put 1 in for x, this is going to get to 16. That's, that's kind of higher than I want to get. Let me go the other way. If we put negative 1 in for x, plus 3 is 2, squared is 4. Put negative 2 in for x, plus 3 is 1, squared is 1. Put negative 3 in for x, we get a 0, squared is 0. I'm just going to do one more. If we put negative 4 in for x, plus 3 is negative 1. Squared is 1. I'm just going to focus on these points right here for the graph. I'm going to do this one in blue. Color code that one blue. All right, negative 3, 0. Uh, 3 to the left. 0 up. I guess we'll just put that one right there. Negative 2, 1. 2 to the left, 1 up. Negative 4, 1. And that's probably enough. <clears throat> now these are pretty crummy graphs here, but I think they're good enough for the discussion. So remember the black one here was the original function y equals x squared. <clears throat> the, the important things to recognize are this. This plus 3 here took this black graph, lifted it up 3 units. This plus 3 right here, putting it inside the parentheses, took that black graph and moved it left 3 units. So these are examples of what are called horizontal and vertical shifts. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of this. All right. <clears throat> In general, if I have any function f of x, and then I have some sort of new function, let's say h of x, which is equal to the old function f of x with some value tacked on. I'll just put plus k here. The relationship between these graphs, h of x is going to be a graph of f of x shifted up by an amount k if k is positive. 
or down by amount k if k is negative, is some negative value. So here we have a function f of x, well, I'm sorry, f of x. Here we have a new function, which is equal to f of x plus some value. So that's why this graph is this graph shifted up three units. Okay. Now let's talk about horizontal uh, shifts. So this function here, I'm going to give it another name. We'll call that one maybe g of x or something. Now you'll notice that f of x in my example is x squared. So this x plus, plus 3 is effectively uh, inside our parentheses here. So what we're looking at here is f of x plus 3 is what this thing's equal to. And you notice that had the effect of shifting the graph to the left three units. So in general, <clears throat> get rid of this. In general, if I have a graph f of x, or some sort of function f of x, and I have a new function h of x, which is equal to f of, I'm gonna say uh, x plus h, this graph f is equal to the or I'm sorry, this graph H is going to be equivalent to the first graph in shape, but it's going to be shifted um, left by an amount H if H is negative, right by an amount H if H is positive. Whoops, I'm sorry, I gotta go through that again. Left by amount H if H is positive, right by amount H if H is negative. Right. <clears throat> Some quick examples of that. So let's look at the function, maybe f of x equals uh, x cubed here. Right? If I had a new function, g of x, that's equal to x cubed minus 5. Right? This new function would be this one shifted down 5 units. Right? If we had a function, g of x, that was equal to, say, x minus 5 the quantity cubed. Now you'll notice now the relationship here between g and f. This is equal to f of x minus 5. This graph g would be equivalent to f, except it'd be shifted right 5 units. If we had uh, another function here, if g of x were equal to x plus 5 the quantity cubed, then this graph would be this one shifted left by five units, right? So there's a little, just kind of a quick introduction to uh, the idea of horizontal and vertical shifts. Um, I think now I'll start a new video and go to your notes, right? Have a great day.